Hi everybody. So today we're going to be talking about pernicious anemia and basically what pernicious anemia is, is like the name implies, it's an anemia. So we're going to see something that's going wrong with the blood in this case. Um, pernicious anemia for the most part is an autoimmune disorder and it's a when your body can't absorb vitamin B12. So this is different than a vitamin B12 deficiency because in a vitamin B12 deficiency what happens is people are not getting enough vitamin B12 and therefore they start to see the symptoms. In pernicious anemia, you can actually be getting enough of the vitamin B12, but your body just can't absorb it. So let's take a look at what happens here. Um, for the most part, like I've already said, there's, this is an autoimmune disorder. So your own white blood cells are going to be causing this. They're going to be attacking cells in your body that are responsible for helping with um, absorbing vitamin B12. The other way that people can get this is something called atrophic gastritis. And what happens with atrophic gastritis is it's a condition in which there's chronic inflammation of the stomach and basically the glands in the stomach stop working. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. And I'm just gonna move my camera over here. And if we were to take a look here, what we're looking at right now is this would be the stomach and then this is going to be the small intestine. So when you eat food, this is our vitamin B12 here. Vitamin B12 can be found in foods such as fish, red meat, cheese, eggs, things such as that. And then we have attached this, it's my B12. And then attached to my B12, I have, in this case, I'm just gonna say I have an animal protein, okay? So here's my animal protein right here. And then when you eat this, and of course it comes into your mouth, you have salivary glands. So salivary glands, as well as the stomach, produce something called R protein. So here's my R protein right here. And like I said, the stomach can reproduce this too. You can also find it in the bile ducts, which are attached to the gallbladder. So when we eat, what's gonna happen is we are going to bring our B12 that's attached to animal proteins here into our stomach, right? So here it is right here. And there's my animal protein attached to it. Okay. Now, in the stomach, you have different types of cells. So one type of cell you have is something that is called a chief cell, okay? And then you have something else called a parietal cell. So chief cells produce a digestive um, molecule that's called pepsinogen, okay? Parietal cells produce stomach acid, which we call hydrochloric acid. Okay, so now, here's what happens. When I get pepsinogen, and it mixes with hydrochloric acid, it makes a digestive juice called pepsin. So I am going to draw my pepsin right here. Right, this is going to be pepsin right here. And when pepsin is in the stomach, what it's going to do is it's going to split my B12 from my animal protein. The reason for this is because your body wants, needs to break down that animal protein. The B12 doesn't need to be broken down. It's, already, it's ready to be absorbed, but the, the protein is not. So we have to break this down. So now, this is basically going to cleave this, and I am going to end up with my B12 and my animal protein now will take an acid bath and get broken down so it can be absorbed. The other thing that's going to happen now is we have these R proteins like we mentioned. So if I have B12 in the presence of um, hydrochloric acid, this will get destroyed. So my R protein attaches onto this. Okay, that's my R protein, right? And then these are going to leave the stomach. So they're going to come down into here. 
The other thing that parietal cells are going to um, produce is something called intrinsic factor. Okay, and we're going to abbreviate intrinsic factor as IF. So this is my intrinsic factor right here. Okay. What happens with intrinsic factor is it is also going to leave the stomach. Okay. So now I have my B12 right there attached to my R protein. Right. And then what I also have in here is something that is called my pancreas. Okay, there's my pancreas. My pancreas is going to produce enzymes called proteases. Okay, so it's going to produce proteases. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to draw my protease right here. And the protease is going to split now this B12 from that R protein. The reason being is because inside the small intestine here, this is no longer acidic. Okay, this isn't acidic anymore. So here's my B12. And here is my R protein. Okay, now remember this intrinsic factor? What's going to happen now is intrinsic factor is going to bond onto this B12. And now they're going to travel inside of the small intestine. They're going to go past the jejunum and they're going to come down to a place that's called the terminal ileum. So the terminal ileum is basically the end of the small intestine. And it's the part that actually attaches to my ascending colon or my ascending large intestine, right? And inside here, we're gonna have receptors. Okay, so there's my receptor right there. And what's going to happen is we are going to get my intrinsic factor along with my B12, and they're gonna go on this receptor, and then they're gonna get separated and B12 is going to pass from the terminal ileum into the bloodstream. So now my B12 is going to enter into the bloodstream. Let me get a different shade of red here. And it's going to pass into the bloodstream. Okay. Now it's become a detached, though, from this intrinsic factor. So now it's in the bloodstream. Here's my B12, right? And once it gets in the bloodstream now, it's going to attach onto another molecule, which is going to help transport this, okay? The trans so this is going to be called trans cobalamin okay so now transcobalamin is going to take this to do different places one 50 percent of b12 will go to the liver and it can stay in the liver for years that's why it takes years usually before you start to realize you have a vitamin b12 deficiency the other place you can go is to cells so the other 50 percent is going to go to cells so let's take a look at that right now. I'm going to move my screen over. You can already kind of see what we're going to be talking about here. Okay. And this is one of the cells. So this is my bone marrow right here. So in my bone marrow, what it does is it produces stem cells. All right. It's going to produce stem cells. So this is my stem cell. And this stem cell is going to go on to become some type of blood cell. In this case, I'm going to say it's a red blood cell. So what's going to happen now is inside of stem cells, we have DNA. And vitamin B12 is responsible for helping with DNA synthesis. Okay? 
as the stem cell replicates and goes on, the DNA contracts in size and it decreases the size of the cell. And then what's eventually going to happen is when it gets to a certain size, my red blood cell is going to kick out the DNA as well as the mitochondria. Okay, and then it's going to it's going to be a red blood cell. So now, here's what's going to happen when we have pernicious anemia: is your body cannot properly make the DNA synthesis, or it can't make the DNA properly. So instead of this cell contracting, the opposite's going to happen. The cell is going to increase in size. So this is going to become bigger. And we actually call this macrocytic anemia, but this is going to become huge. Now that's two different problems here. And part of the reason is, is because one, it may not even be able to leave the bone marrow, or two, it could get clogged inside of blood vessels as, um, as it moves around in the bloodstream. The other thing that's gonna happen is my vitamin B12 actually is responsible for breaking down fatty acids. And when it breaks down fatty acids, those fatty acids can be used to make myelin. So if you've ever seen a nerve, this is the nerve. These are dendrites coming off the nerve. And then this is an axon. Okay, now some of your axons actually have some fat on them. It's a lipid and we call this myelin. And what the myelin is responsible for is increasing the rate of a nerve impulse. Okay, so what happens is instead of this traveling all the way down, it kind of, we say it jumps over it and actually goes through it, but it makes it go much faster. So when I have a B12 deficiency, I can't make the myelin, and therefore I'm gonna to start to see neurological symptoms. So now let's go back and look at what causes this, okay? If we go back to here, this is the stomach again. And you recall we have these parietal cells and we have these chief cells. Well, what happens is you can actually get a type of white blood cell called a dendritic cell. And what these will do is these will actually attack these. You actually have a piece of, inside the cell, you actually have something that makes ATP, okay? so. It takes something called ADP and it makes it into ATP, right? And it does it through a certain molecule and this will actually attack that. But at the same time, when it does, when it's making the ATP, it's gonna have some, uh, it's gonna be releasing hydrogens and the hydrogens actually go on to create the stomach acid. Well, what this does is it looks at this as an enemy cell. It thinks it's, that it's something that should not be in the body and it starts to attack this. Now, the thing about dendritic cells is they're antigen presenting cells. So it's going to now, once it's attacked this, it will actually take part of this cell and present it on it. And it's going to go over to the lymph node and your B cells will start to make antibodies against this. So now you will have antibodies that will actually start to attack these parietal cells. But not only that, the other thing that can happen is you can get antibodies that are against my intrinsic factor, right? And what these will do is, there's, it's actually IgG, immunoglobin G antibodies, and there's two types, it's actually type one, so this would be type one. And what it will do is it'll go on the intrinsic factor and now the intrinsic factor will not be able to bond with the vitamin B12 when the time comes because of the fact now that basically we have this antibody on there. Okay, so now because it can't bond to there, this cannot bond down here. And if it can't bond down here, it can't get into the bloodstream. The other thing that can happen is if I get IgG type two antibodies, they will actually attach down here onto this receptor. So now, even though I have the intrinsic factor and it's coming down, it can't, it can't bond onto there, and therefore you can't absorb the vitamin B there 
also. So let's take a look at some symptoms on this. I'm just gonna push this camera back over here. And let's look at some of the symptoms that we're gonna get with, with this. Symptoms due to the anemia portion um, is pallor. In other words, kind of like you look kind of pale, all right? You kind of got a, a pale appearance. People have a tendency to have fatigue. The reason you get fatigue is you don't have enough um, oxygen going around throughout the body, and because you don't have enough oxygen going around throughout the body, you get more fatigue, okay? Um, another symptom of this is gonna be shortness of breath. The reason you have shortness of breath is you don't have enough red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen, and because they're not carrying oxygen, you breathe more, right? And normally with shortness of breath, you're actually gonna get an increase in heart rate too. Um, another sign of this is going to be a smooth red tongue. That's because you may have these, these blood vessels up in the tongue that get, that get clogged in there. And whereas if it happens in other areas of my body, because of the fact that I have pigments and things such as that, I'm, it's, I'm less likely to see it. So there might be a smooth red tongue. All right. We may get, um, because it's, it affects the neurological system, it's not uncommon for people to get peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is a condition in which people get, oh, they get numbness and tingling in their hands and feet. It's kind of like if you've ever had your arms or your, um, your legs go to sleep or your feet go to sleep. That's going to be peripheral neuropathy. Um, tingling, okay. There could be loss of balance, depending on where it's affecting the spinal cord. Okay, so um, those are some of the signs that we actually get from this. The way they treat this is they do vitamin B12 injections into people to see if that'll treat it. But for the most part, those are some of the symptoms that you have there. So um, that's it for pernicious anemia. And thank you so much for watching.